recording. Hi, everybody. I'm Susan Irby here, and I am with fabulous Cynthia Bazin. Um, a little bit about myself. I'm a certified in food healing, fitness, and uh, nutrition. I am a nine-time cookbook author and health and wellness expert. I um, had a show on KABC Radio, an award-winning show on PBS Television Network, and it was the Bikini Lifestyle Show where we wine, dine, and work out. And I would interview chefs and health experts and um, fitness experts, and it was super awesome and amazing. And now I'm here with you sharing a lot of this, um, my same passions for health and wellness, and Cynthia Bazin. Uh, Cynthia, introduce yourself, tell everybody who you are, and then today's topic is the fabulous GMOs. Everybody's been asking, wanting to talk about it, so we're going to be talking a lot about GMOs, what they are, and um, should they be labeled, uh, what they're doing to our bodies, all those good things. But first, Cynthia. Just muting myself, there's a little noise in the background, but hi everyone, <laughs> Cynthia Basin. I'm the owner of Smart Chicken Motivational Speaking Company and Mentoring Company. And in addition to me mentoring and speaking, I love anything health and fitness. And so Susan Irby is a great friend of mine and I love supporting her lab. So I learn something new every time I'm here. So it's a pleasure to co-host with you, Susan. Thank you, thank you. Well, as I mentioned, today's topic is about GMOs. So anyone, um, wants to come on in you know once we get started and um so i just want to talk about gmos and what they are so gmo stands for genetically modified organisms which most people probably know that by now but not everybody um and it means that plants or animals um have undergone uh, uh, undergone some kind of process that um, scientists have taken their natural genes and they've either changed them or they have taken genes from some other plant, put it in one plant or animal. Um, but they've done this to alter the living organisms. Um, they've uh, modified them with bacteria, sometimes viral um, components to get desired traits. Um, some of those desired traits are to make the animals bigger maybe they focus on more muscle mass for the animal um, or plants to they try to make them more resistant to disease so some of these scientists i feel they think they're helping in a way by making plants um, more disease resistant but um i don't think there's anything healthy about altering the foods that we eat from their natural state so that's kind of what we're going to be talking about today so yes if mr michael would like to come in that would be great um i've done quite a bit of research on the topic and so some of the most common foods or agricultural products that are being genetically modified the obvious one is corn. I mean, you hear a lot about that, but there are other things like papaya. I made a list. Um, sugar beets, soy is huge. Um, lots of squashes, so zucchini and yellow squash and also acorn squash. But the thing that is really becoming most disturbing to me is um, they're really starting to do a lot of this genetic crossbreeding with animals and it's not necessarily something brand new i mean they've been experimenting with these types of things since you know the 1960s and then more so in the 80s and of course throughout the 90s but um you know as i i think one of the hottest animals or fish right now is salmon that they are wanting to alter and they're they're taking um genes uh, from an eel and the salmon and then and connecting those and making them where they grow uh, in 16 to 18 months. So they're making them grow faster as opposed to the normal, say, two to three year process of um, 
it has for um, salmon. They normally grow, naturally grow. Um, I can't hear you, Cynthia. Sorry, just was trying to eliminate the noise in the background. So is it chemicals that they do to make it grow faster? Is that like when you're, you're saying about the salmon, about the eel and salmon and growing it faster, is it with chemicals that it's growing faster or just because of the two different species or whatever? <laughs> yeah, they're actually taking genes. So they'll take genes um, from, from one animal or plant and they'll mutate it with another one to create this entirely new uh, breed of plant or animal. Right. So, I mean, they might be doing some chemical things, it, but it's, it's, um, there's genetically modified organisms and then there's genetic engineering. So genetic engineering is the whole science behind, you know, taking the genes and, um, and mutating them with other genes to create entirely new species. So Michael is saying steroids, uh, salmon was the first genetically, mod genetically modified animal. Um, I'm not sure about that. Uh, in my research, they showed that they started with pigs. Um, they've also have done a lot of genetic testing on cows. So they actually take horned cows and they make them to where they won't grow horns anymore. I mean, that's mm -hmm. just so awful, <laughs> right? Um, there's Chef Dennis. Hi, Chef Dennis. I'd love for you to jump in. So Susan, I just want to, um, there's been a couple questions, comments in the stream. So um, Soul Vision Heals, I'm assuming New Zealand NZ, is that where she's coming in from? I think so, yes. What are your restrictions like in the States? Uh, New Zealand has such huge restrictions and really clear laws controlling GMO as well as managing potential risks. They're actually not quite as strict here in the United States. So, uh, hi, Chef Dennis. Welcome. We're so glad to have you here. Yes. Um, you know, whenever you'd like to jump in and add to the conversation. So, um, Soul Vision Heals, I would, I would like to um, uh, say that the United States is probably one of the least um, restrictive when it comes to genetically modified organisms, GMOs, and, and genetic engineering. Um, the research that I had uh, run across was the Food and Drug Administration actually um, doesn't refer to it, this testing as food. They refer to it as drug testing. Mm -hmm. So it so therefore uh, falls in a little bit of a different category. I'm not a scientist, so I'm basing it on research that I have, have um, studied on from other scientists, other authors, um, you know, other people studying this topic. So I myself am not a scientist, but uh, it's, a, it's a subject that uh, it definitely touches on everything that I do in the sense that, you know, promoting a healthy, you know, health and wellness. So Chef Dennis, would do you have something to add right now? Yeah, you know, having attended ShiftCon two years in a row, you know, Prior to that, I, I had no clue. I was like most people that really didn't understand what GMOs were. It was like, yo, we need to feed the world. We need GMOs, you know, yada, yada, yada. Because they brainwash you into believing that that's the truth. When in, in reality, it's not the truth. It's, it's so far removed from the truth. But they're feeding us a pile of manure. And they're also, <laughs> they're paying all of our politicians to agree with them. You know, there are yeah. so many... There's so many campaign contributions from Monsanto, and Monsanto's starting to lose ground. I think they are beginning to get a little worried. And the one thing you want to look at is the rest of the world doesn't let them in. But our Food and Drug Administration just keeps giving them carte blanche. You know, like they added, what was it, D4 or whatever it was, uh, D24, or the, the half of Agent Orange, to the glycophosphate to Roundup because Roundup wasn't working anymore. Right, right. Well, because a lot of these, this testing that they're doing and these gene mutate, mutations that are doing are uh, making them resistant to different types of pesticides. And so now they have to come up with a different way, you know, to do it. But unfortunately, they're not, they're not um, looking towards organic and natural methods. You know, they're looking toward more, more and more chemicals, you know. Uh, um, so, Douglas, you thank you for joining us. Where are you joining us from? 
Arizona from Canada Arizona. originally, though. Hi, Douglas. <laughs> yeah, I um I have a different take than probably you three. Um, but my question is, do you think GMOs may be harmful, or do you think they are harmful? Um, I think it depends on the type, you know, exactly what they're doing. I do feel that it is harmful to modify the natural states of foods, in my opinion, especially when it comes to animals. Um, I, I see no benefit in making a salmon grow faster than its natural order. I mean, you're interfering with the natural order of life, in my opinion. So does interfering with the natural order of life necessarily mean it's harmful? Uh, if you're taking um, and, and something to make it grow faster or in pigs, they're making them specifically to where their butts grow twice to three times the size of the normal. Um, if they were uh, doing that, butts, to humans, then I just don't find that healthy. I don't. If they were doing that to humans, we would have serious problems. OK, we would yeah. look at a whole lot differently because we're doing it to animals, a food source who a lot of people just don't consider worthy of caring about. That's where we have the problems. And, and a lot of these things with the GMOs is, you know, we don't it's not so much what they're genetically modifying is the fact that what they have to spray that genetically modified product with. OK, so you're, you're changing the whole makeup of that grain. And one of the problems we have in this world, in this country, is uh, gluten intolerances, soy intolerances, and where have all, you know, like the soybean crop has grown and grown and grown. So soy is in freaking everything. All right. So the two biggest GMO crops and the gluten intolerance is because we have perverted the wheat by changing it and changing it from the original, what is it, 11 or 12 chromosomes in the, in, in the original wheat molecule to something like 26 or 30. So now these people are getting allergies to stuff but you start, you're going back and find some of this European wheat that hasn't been perverted, that's still natural. And they don't have the intolerances to it. It's everything we're doing to food to make it better and to make it last longer. I, I'm learning on this whole topic. So, you know, just kind of taking everything in. So, Douglas, what is, I mean, obviously you have a different opinion. Uh, what is your opinion and what is it based on? I mean, I'm, I'm here to learn and would love well, to hear your perspective. Yeah, I'm evidence driven. And so I, come from the point of view, I don't care either way. So I want to see where the evidence leads, right? So, and all the research I've read against GMOs have used the word may cause this or may be harmful. They, and I, they're very, very careful. And if you read the literature, they're very careful not to say that it does cause this or it is harmful. And, you know, the World Health Organization, the American Medical Association, the National Academy of Sciences, the American Association of Advancement of Science, all those organizations have said there's no research that says that GMOs are harmful. But I find that's really a legal situation, um, you know, which is kind of a different topic. I feel like, um, uh, you know, why are they banned? No matter what field you're in, you 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 know, if you come out and you you make a, a claim, I mean, it's hard for anyone to say that a particular food is going to make you sick, you know, or is going to heal you. Uh, it's like I, as a certified food healer, I would be a fool to sit there and say if you eat beets, it's going to cure you of cancer. I can't say that, but I can tell you that if you you know by eating beets you know they um they do detoxify the liver so i can i can say things like that so i think it's i mean never never is the government going to come out and say yes you know this is harmful first of all they're never going to say it's harmful because they're making too much money um satisfying consumer demand uh, you know, by by doing these uh, genetic engineering and creating these genetically modified foods. So, um, but also they're never going to say it's not harmful because they're not, they're probably not sure if it is or not. And if they are, they would just open themselves up to a bunch of lawsuits. Like I do agree that uh, when you genetically modify uh, an organism, uh, let's say it's wheat. And I think uh, Chef Dennis made a great point that what you end up having is 
the uh, you have to constantly change the the um, the pesticides because of evolution. These bugs will evolve to um, they will constantly evolve, so you have to constantly have come up with new pesticides to kill them. And so I do agree that GMOs may cause what's you know what's called a superbug that might not be able someday in the future be able to kill. Um, because we're making so many resistant type crops, resistant to bugs and different other um, weeds, that it's becoming increasingly harder and harder to kill these bugs and kill these weeds. Well, so I do agree with that, but I do not see any evidence currently that says GMOs are harmful in any way. Well, again, it's getting back to the GMOs themselves. All right, we're not going to say necessarily that they are harmful, and it's not that the bugs. They're resistant to bugs. They're not at all resistant to bugs. They're resistant to the spray that Dow. Right, that's what I mean. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, that you have to buy if you buy Monsanto seed. Okay, mm. they've got you. That's the thing is they've got you one hand on each one of your you know squeezing, and one is making you buy the seed, and then the other is making you buy the chemical. So it's not so much you know like I, I don't think that modifying food the way we're modifying is really doing what we think it's doing it's only causing problems but i'll give you that one and say okay play with seeds all you want but it's when you're spraying all these pesticides and when the report from the uh the, the national association i forget the one that did it uh the, the united states report stated that iowa over 60 percent to 100 percent of the rain coming down contained glycophosphate yeah, like I was raised on a farm and I have a master's in analytical chemistry. So I I understand where you're coming from. And I've sprayed crops with my own hands in tractors and so forth. And I've over the years, I'm not a farmer anymore, but my dad was a farmer and we had to constantly change the chemicals. Oh. And I agree. I, I hear what you're saying that um, that the chemical companies are profiting from it, from this, these changes. But to go from that and then say that GMOs are actually harming that's a that's a different situation that's a well, different claim it is it is and they're trying to use that as leverage because the really important fact that they're trying to hide and to keep from everybody is that we got to spray that with the really bad stuff okay like i, I said this the gmo you know changing the seed but first of all why do you want seeds that won't keep growing like that you buy a seed and, and normally when you when you eat something the seeds from that fruit or vegetable you can plant and you can grow more crops. So we've hybridized things so that they don't, you can't keep growing them. You can't keep passing okay. those seeds down. You got to keep buying seeds. So it's that's- for the so we have, uh, I, I'm going to interrupt you. We have someone in the stream, um, Soul Vision Hills. Um, she would uh, like to give her opinion on this topic. So can I have one of you jump out and then you can jump back in? Don't go away though, Chef Dennis. I always like having you here. So. Um, so Soul Vision, if you'd like to come in now, if you can, we know that you're really passionate about this topic. So we'd like to hear from you and we would like to include your uh, your opinions and your perspectives in there. Are you are you around Soul Vision? Um, here she is, Rebecca. Okay. There, there again, we are. We're, okay. <laughs> we're respectful of all opinions. <laughs> yes. Hi, Rebecca. How are you? Of all opinions, Rebecca, go for it. Well, she's, she's <laughs> coming from I'm Zealand. I'm really passionate on this topic just because my child, or both of my children actually, are now dairy free, gluten free, and sugar free because of what we put in our foods, because of this GMO standard, because of the hormones that go into our chickens. But you know, some people say organic food is a crock. Don't believe it at all. You know, I go to the supermarket, I bring fruit home. I have to stick it in vinegar and baking soda to remove everything, all the sprays, all the crap they've put on our food. How is that good for our children? How is that good for the people who don't know how to do that, who don't know what they're putting into their bodies? And in 10 years time, what does that look like for the world? You know, let's take imbalance out of our fishing industry out of our cow industry out of our sheep industry let's make more and more and more and more and more well look what happens when we make more and more people in the world there's a massive imbalance right same thing with our animal populations let's take the wolves out of yellowstone park the entire ecosystem crashes they put them back in 
it's brought back up to where it should be. There is a natural order for food, for humans, for everything. Why play with the balance? And that's what Nicole Nicole is saying. She's like, what about the long-term impact of the gym, of GMOs on our body and putting these strange um, bodies into our body that it's made to digest natural food? She's talking about the long-term effect that is not talked about very much. And I agree with that and all the research I've done. They talk about what they're modifying and what they're doing to modify them, but they're not really talking about those long-term effects. So Cynthia or Douglas, do you have something to say about that? Well, I know that there are like 20 year studies on GMOs already out there and they show no conclusive um, harmful effects. And when I got my thesis in, uh, when I did my thesis in analytical chemistry, it was on pesticides, uh, Rebecca. Mm -hmm. And we and it, we sprayed pesticides on corn, on the on the leaf of the corn. And then we had, you know, different concentrations and different plots. And then we analyzed after one day. Uh, those leaves after the pesticides had, had been sp uh, sprayed on. And we found that like 99.99999% of that pesticide was gone. It was either um, broken down by the sun mm -hmm. or it was metabolized by the plant. But so what year was you, that? How do you explain oh, then what comes Rebecca. out in the water? Yeah. Well, what year was that, Douglas? Well, that's a different issue. Uh, that was um, 1991. And so in what way have the pesticides changed since then? Right. You know, you look at Roundup and how ineffective it is now. So they bring out harsher and harsher and harsher chemicals. And that's what's going on our food. And they say, make sure to wash your food before you eat it. How many people do that? I mean, I know you have to be responsible for your yeah, own I, intake I, of I food. Agree. But I agree that people need to, I, I think that's common sense that you should wash your food before you eat it. Like, And maybe Not people don't have that common sense. Well, though, right? But, you know, a lot of the, the vegetables we eat and fruits uh, we eat um, are triple rinsed. They'll say it on the bag before you even buy it, uh, that they've been triple rinsed. And when you get home, you should do the same thing, triple rinse it yourself just to make sure. So if everybody's being honest and everybody's using common sense, and if you believe me that 99.999% of pesticides are gone either from the sun or for the metabolizing of the plant, then that remaining 0.0001% percent will be washed off either from the producer or from yourself but there's a certain you know chef dennis is saying that the sun does not burn off the chemicals they absorb into the food which is true of say let's say that's why i always advocate buying you know if you can't both. afford to buy all organic you need to at least buy organic you know corn organic strawberries you know, um, anything with the more porous skins, because it's gonna, the chemicals are gonna seep right into the food. You do, you don't agree with that, Douglas? Yeah, it does. Uh, well, it does absorb into the plant, yes, but then the plant metabolizes it just like we metabolize food ourselves when we eat it. So that yeah, initial, sure the molecular structure, you, the, <laughs> you know, the, the molecular structure of that pesticide changes once it enters and is metabolized by the plant. You how know, do you test that? How do you test that? Yeah. that you know. Okay, it's, Cynthia. It's simple. You put it through a mass spectrometer and you can see if that pesticide is still there. Yeah, I'm, ground, I'm, not, I'm not buying that. Uh, uh, sorry. With, well, it, it's, I, I, there's no way I can convince you of that. But, um, no, 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 no. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. I, have, I have a question for you guys. Uh, like you can read the literature yourself and study chemistry if you want, but uh, I got a question for you guys. Is it, do you think the fear of GMOs is the speed of the genetic modifications or is it just it's genetically modified because all the cattle we have today are GMOs, every single one? Um, go I ahead, disagree, Rebecca. not in our country. Yeah. No, I, mean, I mean, like if you look where cattle have come from, man has created cattle over the last thousand years. Like the cattle come from a certain type of oxen, which came from a certain type of another animal. But man has basically said, oh, look at this animal. Uh, it has a lot of meat uh, and less fat. Here's another one. Let's breed them. So they've been doing that for thousands of years. And that's how we got the cattle we have today. So that there's is the a difference between crossbreeding and there's a difference between genetically engineering them. So 
Um, we're going to have to. Let's do this. Let's do this. You know, let's do this just because we do have a lot of people. And I know Susan and yeah. I yeah. like to get different perspectives, different people. I mean, I appreciate everything you're saying, Douglas, in your perspective. I'd love to hear someone else's too to see. Do they agree? Do they feel the same as Rebecca, you know, and what um, Susan is saying? So, Douglas, I appreciate you jumping in today. Um, okay. Yes. Like you yeah, could yeah, yeah, for some other people it's, that might be passionate also to come on in and give their perspective. Thank you so right. much for your time. All right, who would like to join in and add to this discussion? I would love to hear. Come on in. We've got lots of people in the stream. So I know. Hi, Rebecca. I didn't have a chance to say. <laughs> <laughs> this is obviously a passionate subject. Um, Susan, would you oh, like? Yeah. To, did you have some other points that you wanted to try to get in as we? Uh, <laughs> um, you know, he um, is. You know, I appreciate his passion and all that. But he was talking about. Um, you know, like the cows, and I, there's a difference, as I said, between crossbreeding and then genetic genetic engineering, and then also pumping pumping them full of hormones and things like that. So it's not really the same thing as taking, you know, this kind of cow and then mating it, and then you know, and saying, oh, now we have a, you know, a different type of cow. That's not really the same thing no because so, they possibly um, could have done that in the wild for themselves you just don't know but to put them in a lab and inject them with something that is not that is not crossbreeding of any nature you know so who yeah chef dennis or would someone like to come in we have a lot of people in the stream so i'd love to hear have someone come back in we don't want to have an open seat with this this many people <laughs> Oh, Hi, Chef. You, I saw you fervently typing I'm, over there. I'm sorry. I, I'm just not buying buying that brand of crazy today. You know, everybody's entitled to their opinion, and, and like right. I said, if they don't believe, it, please keep eating all that stuff. Because... <laughs> yeah. Just, just people well, just, 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 in their children. Do do you see it in your children? I mean, I know America has a massive obesity problem in your children, but. Do you, I mean, I see it, and I know you don't understand what netball is probably, but on the netball courts, I used to be an average size. You go down to the netball courts now, the children are huge. Yes. The hormones yeah. that are going into our diet is what's creating that. And I've seen the natural rise. It's not like, oh, some kids are just coming from a taller family, whatever. No, no, that, no, I don't believe that for a second. Puberty is hitting sooner now too, puberty. I mean, they're getting more you know, advanced sighting and everything <laughs> in years. Well, at younger ages, yeah, at, at much younger ages as well. And they're developing allergies. Oh uh, they're developing different, you know, immune intolerances. So, um, you know, I, I appreciate Douglas, if he's still in the stream, I really appreciate you know his opinion and his insights, but I still don't, do not agree that um, by interfering in the natural order of things is is not going to be harmful. And why the government isn't wanting to say GMOs are harmful is because they're using them in virtually everything that they're manufacturing. So, of course, they're not going to say they're harmful. You know, then they would um, open themselves up to billions and billions of dollars in lawsuits and all the attorneys yeah. would get rich and everybody be dead. So not, yeah, not to mention all the calls from uh, from uh, Capitol Hill they'd be getting because mm. you know, Monsanto is giving so many donations to all of our politicians that it's insane. I mean, you look at, at who's who are their big donators, you know, who's where's money coming from. So that's what it's coming down to. And that's what really makes me sick. That and the fact that the politicians we elect are voting just party lines, but that's a whole different subject. <laughs> that's a whole. It is. It is. So a couple of a couple of comments in the stream we have from um, Mr. Michael. He says, "But no one seems to pay attention to on this topic is the longevity issue." And then Wayne um, Metter, um, he and I connected through Cynthia's authentic networking lab that she does, and he's asking about. What about sexual vitality in middle-aged people? Has that been effective? I, Wayne, have not um, studied that part of the GMO effects right now, and there really has not been a tremendous amount of um, studies done. I, I believe uh, Chef Dennis, he's on his cell phone, I believe, and he said he can't come in, Wayne. Yeah. So, um, 
so I don't know that I will personally have to do more research before I can give my opinion on um, actual studies that have been done on longevity and the sexual impacts. But from what I've learned in my food healing, um, absolutely, it's going to have an effect uh, on that. The FDA has already ordered the removal of GMO, GMO from all food products. Okay. I'm not sure that that. Yeah. Um, I, I think not, that to, uh, like in our country, we have to have everything labeled GMO. And I think that's coming into your country slowly, isn't it? But I don't know. Um, the labeling, the yeah. labeling is a hot topic. It's, mm -hmm. um, uh, hi Cliff. We want to welcome you. Uh, labeling right now, there've been a lot of articles and studies written about label. There are proponents for labeling and then there are those who oppose labeling. Um, the opposers of labeling uh, oppose for a variety of reasons. One is the cost, you know, of the labeling, but also is it really going to make sense to people or is it going to confuse consumers more? And so personally to me, I think we might want to, it's 2.34, so we've been on for, for a good half an hour already. We might want to make that a secondary lab where we talk about labeling. So, Cliff, welcome. Where are you coming to us um, from? And we'd love to hear yeah, can your you hear me opinion. Okay? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> I got a cold, so I'm a little bit deeper in the voice. Today. Sorry to hear right. that. I just don't want to drive you ladies crazy, you know. <laughs> as um, long as I don't catch the cold, I'm good. No, no. Right. Lab does not transfer colds. Uh, and GMO is <laughs> right. You're good. <laughs> Wait a minute. What did I say? So here's the thing. Um, I, I could go on for hours, days with you guys about the subject keep it going, bring more labs online about is the first one I've actually seen on here. Uh, I've been around for about 60 days, actually. Um, <clears throat> and uh, we need more talk about um, the chemicals in the environment in general. And of course, uh, you talk about Monsanto, the glyphosate situation, the GMOs. Um, it, it's a conspiracy heavy duty in the United States. Keep this going and abroad. And, and, and finally, you know, abroad, they're, they're saying no to GMO. They're saying no in, in South Africa and other places where you wouldn't expect it. But they have the ability to, to, to do that and say, no, we're not having it here. We're not taking it in. And, and ballyhoo to them because they know that these dead seeds that they're trying to punch out there, it's just a moneymaker for Monsanto going forward, um, where they, they've killed the germination ability of the seeds. <clears throat> so they continue doing that. Aside from the chemicals, aside from the glyphosate, uh, you know, I watched a guy spray Roundup with his kid running around with bare feet in it the other day, and I, I had to say something. I went over and mm -hmm. and I said, "Do you realize what your you know your son is running through this thing? You just sprayed these weeds." Which, um, anyway, so the 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 bottom line for me is that, that these chemicals do not belong, and and the GMO, like you guys were saying, this is not the same as grafting 20, 30, 50 years ago. Uh, these are things that we are messing around with the future. We do not know what this is going to do. And and precautionary principle is being thrown out the window. It's not even being talked about. And these guys are out there saying, no, we, we don't, you know, we, we're okay. Just leave us alone. And, you know, Chef Dennis hit it right on the head. And I, I wasn't here earlier. And if you hit this, <clears throat> I'm sorry. It's about the cash flow. It's about the flow from the big corporations into Washington to say, no, we're going to keep doing this until we, and I wrote in the side column, this is about causality disconnect. If you walked into McDonald's, for example, and you died from eating hamburgers, they'd be out of business, but mm -hmm. they'll slowly kill you over years. Same thing with GMO, same thing with the glyphosate in it, and all the other chemicals in, that have been pumped into our systems uh, over the years is that because our kids don't die at the dinner table from from that chemical people are saying no no these these guys are full of crap you know water's bad for you if you eat too, drink too much of it and all that nonsense that goes on um and wow. it, people have to become one of my big things is people have become more aware and stop drinking the Kool-Aid and stop drinking the glyphosate, whatever the hell they're drinking out there and say, these corporations, I, if you follow the money, the answer will come. But people put their head in the sand. They say, no, they're, they're either they get swayed by some other people or some, some party line by the corporations. Uh, you know, the dark act, did you guys talk about the dark act in Washington? No, we did not talk about that. You know what I'm talking about? 
I have okay. not studied up on that. Okay, I've so been. check it out. It I, I get stuff from uh, the the uh, the folks at um, I'm trying to think Organic Consumer Association or whatever OCA, and they they've been fighting this thing. It went through Congress. It's in the Senate. Uh, people are slowly, quietly trying to push this. And again, people are being paid off in, in the back rooms. And these guys end up if they don't take direct bribes anymore, uh, <clears throat> they do. But you know, whatever, they end up getting cor corporate uh, jobs after they leave uh, or uh, jobs in, uh, you know, in, in directorships and beyond um, uh, seats in these corporations who feed them uh, the, 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 uh, the line to keep our chemicals in your society. And if you guys check it out, um, the uh, during Katrina, for an example about chemicals, uh, the Katrina trailers were loaded with formaldehyde. Okay, this is because wow, of, yeah, really? China, here's the deal. China was se selling the uh, press board to make these things here, and they won't sell the same press board in China. Hmm. Okay, this is what goes on. This is the dumping ground here in the U.S. Okay, yeah, I, know you're, I know you're all not in the U.S. <laughs> um, Thanks, Rebecca. <laughs> We are the dumping ground here because we're all going to move to New Zealand. Yeah. As soon as I get a plane ticket, I'm out of here. Uh, no, but I mean, I, I, I like the idea of some of the aspects of capitalism and, and, and corporatism, and, and but most of them I don't. So I'm a big proponent of people taking charge. I love Blab because people come together, have these conversations. Maybe we have an effect on the sidebar uh, folks over there to, to, to just sit back and, well, maybe what I heard wasn't true. And mm -hmm. I don't have any agenda here except to wake people up to the reality that this stuff is in your kids. It's in your food. It's on your clothes. It's it's everywhere you turn. And there's a movie, by the way, in uh, going around. It's going to have a theatrical release. Check this out. Uh, Stink the movie. All right. Look that up. Yes, I've heard of that. Okay. So I met, I actually got, reached out to the guy, John Whalen, who actually produced it and stars in it. It's an hour and a half movie. He lost his wife to cancer. He has two young children. It's a phenomenal movie that everybody's got to see and realize that where the money goes is the answer. Okay. It, he, so over in the sidebar, we have, they say, um, <clears throat> the order says by 2017, all GMOs will no longer be allowed in any products, period, nor will any other additives be allowed as a replacement. Where is that coming here's from? The, yeah, yeah, where is well, that? <laughs> here's, here's the thing. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure that that's even humanly possible, possible no, it's because not. they've done so much genetic modifications and, and genetic engineering how all of a sudden is it supposed to be um miraculously disappeared i'm not sure i believe that if you either. can put the link so, in the chat um, screen that would be awesome to that article yeah <laughs> yeah great yeah so i think propaganda i think we're yeah. being, you know when we're talking about the changes in our and our uh children and things like that um in my opinion you know back how GMOs got started in the first place was really out of an order of convenience and the and the consumer's demand. And so all of a sudden these manufacturers said, wow, well, you know, we, you know, back in the days of the farm days, like my family has a farm, you know, we would grow all, all kinds of crops, you know, potatoes, corn, um, different types of melons, zucchini, squash, all these things. And we would, so all of a sudden the manufacturers decided, hey, well, let's make it faster and better and taste better and faster. Rebecca, I think I think we actually talked a little bit about how they actually come up with all these chemical flavors to get the right enhanced you know and they put that into the foods and I think you know back in the in the day you know the the 50s the moms they were so excited to have these convenience foods and the kids loved them and they tasted good and then along comes the microwave so um, it was all born out of really convenience and wanting things faster and fast, you know, faster and better and easier. It's and, lower cost um, also, right? Yeah, yeah no one really. Pride. But let, no me one gave, some, uh, let me let me interject, Susan. Also think about shelf life. Most of these GMOs, they yeah, do not per taste, uh, uh, create a better tasting food. I've never, and I will tell you this, I 
I give them a birth on it. Say, okay, there's a, but these apples that don't turn dark, you know, because uh, it, it, this is another big thing that's gone on. That that that's yeah, wrong. they're coming out with potatoes now, like that. that won't, 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 you know, that will turn brown. Uh, it's nonsense. I mean, the whole thing, you know, dump sulfites on your food, put nitrites in it, you know, is do everything food? you can to do. Like, is that food? It's on the shelf, right? Not. It's not food, and and it's not supporting us. And if you Take the precautionary principle and forget about that. Just say, I don't want to put things in my body that are going to challenge my system in a negative way. I want to put things that are going to support my cells to reproduce in a positive way, not turn into cancer cells or not turn into hurt each other and so on and so forth. And that's what we're doing. People don't realize that, like I said, if you don't walk in or out of a place and you die from eating a, a thing that's a, a strawberry that's covered with uh, pesticides, you, you figure it's okay. And that's just bad thinking. It is because you're no, not looking kind of, at the big picture. Ahead. What about the emotional issues? The I mean, I can see it in my own business. The amount of people that are coming with to me with cancer and with depression and with all these other underlying issues that just they're not talked about to other people because you close yourself in. You know what? What? Well, is, that's kind of what I was saying. You know, so you know, a lot of this. Um, got started with all the marketing and consumer demand for convenience and quicker, faster, easier, people weren't really actually giving any mental thought to what what does this mean? What are we eating? What are we doing? So it's really been a very slow evolution now to where GMOs have been even, um, you know, considered, you know, before it was Oh, I'll just buy it and I'll, you know, they, they market it to me. It must be good for me. I trust what they're putting in my food. So, you know, doing exactly what we're doing right now, I feel is the real solution and getting people educated on what the GMOs actually are and genetic engineering and educating people on how, um, where to buy, you know, to buy organic or to start growing their own or, um, you know, source local farmers instead Start of with buying the children. You know, so often the children uh, educate their parents into what they do and don't want. So, you know, you guys have lunches in schools, right? Yes, we do. I'm so pleased we have control over what goes in our children's lunch boxes. Can you imagine? I mean, do the schools go no GMO, or do they go cheap, quick, and easy? Let's feed our children. At least they're getting fed. <clears throat> Yeah, I remember. So Cliff, I'm gonna have you step out yeah, for a second. <laughs> Terrible, Mr. Michael. So step, step out so someone else curious. <laughs> All right, guys, it's been a pleasure. I'll I'll be yeah, here, here for you. Let me know. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. guys. Mike, I'll need to head out in a few. I apologize. Oh, here we go. Oh, good. I've Let's got like see, a good five minutes, Sue, Susan, and then I'm okay. Hello, okay. everybody. Hi there. Hi, where are you coming from? Uh, England. England. Yeah, but I've lived all over the world, so uh, and I'm about to move Welcome. to Canada. And the reason why we're moving to British Columbia so we can grow our own organic fruit and vegetables. Nice. We're completely off the grid because I'm not having any of this Monsanto creeping into my body, that of my wife or my four kids, <laughs> who are all homeschooled, by the way, because I'm not having them indoctrinated into socialism and communism. <laughs> right. So right. I'm a big so Monsanto advocate. Yes. Yes. So you're moving and you're going to grow. You're going to you're going to start your own farm. Yeah, well, not, well not, not necessarily farm. I mean, the, the whole point is here in England, it's very difficult to grow your own fruit and vegetables. because It rains a lot. So, oh. yeah, and it's quite cold. So you've got that challenge. But we found this space in British Columbia called Kelowna where all the wineries are. And the temperature in the winter drops about. 59 degrees just slightly below zero celsius which is about 50 degrees fahrenheit something like that so you can grow your own fruit and vegetables and then in the spring and summer the weather's very very good hence the wineries so it's a good location where you're in the rocky mountains area land is cheap compared to here you can buy a piece of land buy and build whatever you want on it and easily go off the grid and grow your own fruit and vegetables there's plenty of herbs wild crafted herbs growing in the forest there that you can pick as long as you know what you're doing uh, and do your own stuff, have solar panels and easily go off the grid um, and grow your own food, make your own jams and get the kids involved so that they learn. Because that, that's the whole point. I mean, you, you can't be doing all this stuff and then not transferring the knowledge and, and, and teaching your kids to fish, as they say. So they, right. learn, they have to learn the why. I mean, we've been vegan for 15, 16 years now. And uh, the kids were born into 
our, our family a vegan, basically, but they've had the option to choose and we've explained to them why. So it's not that don't eat any meat. If you want to go to McDonald's and order a hamburger, no problem. But we've shown them enough documentaries for them to realize that, you know, the meat thing is not good and the GMO thing is not good. But why? And understanding the right. why is very important because when kids go to school these days, they teach them to read a book and answer questions from that book. But there's no reasoning involved. And so we need to teach kids to think, not to memorize and, and repeat when the First World War started, when the Second World War started. No, and question things as well, because a lot of what they teach you in school is, is not reality. I mean, take, for example, uh, JFK. He wasn't killed by one person. How come he had bullets here and bullets here? How could someone shoot you here and here unless you're sitting next to you? <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of stuff that, that's being taught that's wrong. I mean, the whole medical system is wrong. It's drug based. Um, so so what are we doing here? So are we saying that, that man's medicine is better than God's medicine? Exactly. Because my wife had cancer a few years ago and she went to see the doctor and he wanted to operate. And she said, no, I'm not going to be operated. She went out there. She found the right herbs. Within three months, she was cancer free. She went back to the doctor, hoping that he would ask why or how she got better. And he said, sometimes the body cures itself. That was his explanation. He refused to accept that herbs from a forest cure cancer. Because in his book, it says it's incurable. All right. We're going to welcome Kathy. Let's see if she can come in. Susan, great job, to. great topic. I got a slide out. I apologize. It is a great topic. I great know. Topic. Thank you for nice joining us, Cynthia. If someone else would like to join in. Hi, Kathy. Hi. Sorry Hi, I Kathy. was this way. I just came back from a run. Don't worry yes. about it. It happens to me Good. all the time. <laughs> so, Kathy, where are you? And, and share with us some of your insights. Um, I'm from Pennsylvania. Okay. And um, this topic is is... I would say near and dear to my heart, but I'm starting to really read about it, you know, right. look into it. Um, I bought non-GMO seeds and plan to start my own garden. Um, my kids, you know, I try to, the best we can eat as healthy as we can, but it's, you know, like I think you guys were saying that it's pretty expensive. You know, all that processed yeah. food is so cheap. You know, why is it cheap? Yeah, that's that's well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but if you, yeah, but if you count, Kathy, if you calculate in the long run, I mean, for example, my kids have never seen a doctor in their lives. My oldest son's 15. My daughter's seven. Uh, a couple of years ago, we had a mirror in the house fell on my daughter's hand. The, the ligaments in her hand were completely cut. Oh, Doctors oh. wanted to operate on it. My wife came in with all her herbs, sorted it out. Within four weeks, her hand was fully functional. She got a little bit of a scar, fully functional. The doctors wow. thought it was completely impossible to do. So, so I know Chef Dennis I, I has mean, an opinion on that. So, so, so the question is: Was it cheaper to use the herbs, or was it cheaper to take her to the to the hospital and have an operation where they were going to cut her hand all the way up here, and and then she would have probably had a hand for the rest of her life that wouldn't function properly. So no, I, I actually had a I actually had a blab that I did before on pricing out um, organic versus non-organic and we're buying processed foods over non-processed foods and actually. Um, the grass fed beef that I found and, and the free range chicken was actually cheaper in some instances. Uh, you just have to look for that on sale and things like that. So, also, Asian, I mean, Asian, yeah, so. Asian, Asian markets. I mean, we get, we can buy here in England where we live in, in near Manchester, we can either go to the supermarket or the grocery store, as you call it, to buy our fruit and vegetables. Otherwise you go to the Asian market where we only we where we get about seven cost seventy percent less than wow. what it cost right. at, the, at the supermarket, and the quality is a lot better. So, oh, Kathy, um, yeah, let's have you share a little bit more of your opinion. Um, as far doing. as the GMOs is concerned, yeah, about the GMOs and your experience, or you know what what your thoughts are on them. Yeah, I, I mean, they say that ninety percent of corn is GMO. Yes. You know, and you look at all the products that we have that have corn in them. Yeah. You know, it's alarming. You know, you may, you know, have a, I don't know, something that's got corn in it, a box of whatever. And um, you may not even think, oh, this has GMO. But you know what? It's got corn in it. How do right. you know that, that you're not eating GMO? So I think, you know, a lot of people in the United States really don't understand what GMO is. I think it's starting to become more in the forefront. People are starting to talk about it more. 
And I think there's becoming an awareness. But I also believe that people are doing this. Yeah. Because out of convenience, because that would inconvenience them. Then they may not be able to eat what they want to eat. You and know. I was trying to point out that I feel like that's kind of how we got in this mess in the first place is because it's out of convenience. People wanted more, better, faster, quicker, and they wanted it to taste good, but they don't want to put the effort in to make it taste good. Jeff Dennis, you know, you and I love to cook, but not everybody does. You know? right. Oh, I it's hate not, cooking. <laughs> it, it's not that hard. You know, and people, I was just talking with someone today about it. We were talking about food and how someone else would just take a can of this and a can of this and mix it together. And we would never think of doing that. And it really is not as difficult as people seem to think it is. And there's been so many advances in good food processing, frozen vegetables uh, compared to canned vegetables and fresh vegetables. But, you know, you were talking about an Asian market and that's all well and good if you know your source of where they're getting it is good. And what I found about a lot places like Asian markets too is you don't get much shelf life on the product that they sell a lot of times. When you're buying these real cheap vegetables, it's because they're on their last legs and they're getting them. So you, oh no, this, this stuff where I go comes well, off the airplane in Manchester Airport, straight there. Sometimes we get there, it just arrives straight off the airplane. Not where it happens in the US, you know, and then that's another bad thing since we're talking about how we're eating. Okay. Yeah. The carbon footprint. Everything we're eating now is coming off of an airplane. When the hell did that start? Why, yeah, why don't we you're, you're right, Dennis. That's why I'm moving to British Columbia. Because yeah. when I was in British Columbia last year, every restaurant I went in, the bottom of the menu, it said, everything on your plate has been grown in British Columbia. So carbon mm. footprint is almost zero. Well, that's what I was saying. You know, it's so that's where it goes back to either growing your own foods. As Kathy got her non-GMO seeds and she's going to start growing foods, you're going to move uh, and grow some of your own food. Yeah. Also, but you can buy from local farmers, as yes, the yes. gentleman in the stream is saying, grow your own. A lot of people are yeah. saying that. And I think that's great, you know, for those of us who are here in the stream. You know, we obviously feel passionate about this and we um, are aware and we're um, dedicated to learning more about it and discussing it and helping others become more aware. But I'm going to tell you, you know, probably... 50% or more of my neighbors of the street might not, they might not really care, you know, no, what they're right. eating. A lot of people so. don't, they really don't. You know, I, I, it's, it's amazing. Now I, I sell health and wellness products and you would be amazed how many people just, they look at the price or whatever. And it's like, no, I think I'll go get my box of whatever, you know, snack bars for $2. Well, yeah. read the ingredients. Yeah, you yeah. know they don't care. They just don't care. Well, you know, a lot of it yeah. is, is education because honestly, up to about two years ago, when I was at Chef Education, Con, you said I, it. I really did not care a whole lot about it, and I was a chef. I mean, I I wanted good products, and I made my sure my products were wholesome. But I wasn't worried about GMO. I wasn't worried about organic as much. You know, if it looked good, if the melon looked good, if it felt good, if it smelled good, if it tasted good, I didn't care where it came from. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if you saw my analogy about taking, if you were to take a tomato, right, two tomatoes, take one of them, soak them for a little while and round up, take it out, wash it, and then put it right next to each other and ask somebody which one was soaked in Roundup and would you eat it? Yeah, well, put it out in the sun for a while so the sun metabolizes it and it'll all go away. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think uh, there's a gentleman in the stream, Vin. He's not going to be coming in uh, today. He's multitasking, I think. But he made a good point, and I, I fully agree with this, is that maybe we can educate the younger generations, make it fun for them. So as we're talking about, you know, he says get a pot, a garden box, it's, you know, make it easy and fun. I myself, as a chef and uh, chef instructor, I go into school systems, and I – uh, try to educate the children on, you know, how how real fruits and vegetables are really grown. So I'll take in carrots that have the stem still on them. And the kids are amazed. They've never seen that before. You know, they've seen yeah. them on a store in a package or just sitting on the shelf. And so, um, yeah, so uh, some of the chefs here in the Los Angeles and Orange County communities are actually going to schools and building, um, you know, starting little farms, organic um, gardens with the students at the school. So 
uh, it is. It's going to take more people like you here in the stream and more chefs, you know, Dennis, like you, um, you know, getting out there and educating and showing. Uh, but I think um, I don't want to say, you know, that adults are at total loss, but it's harder to change their mindset than it is to educate the children. So perhaps we can all do more, you know, to to educate the children. Well, a lot we of times. That's why they're in. Oh, go ahead. go ahead. Yeah, a lot of times the children will teach their parents if we can get yeah. to that. Well, that's what the thing is, is if you realize, you know, the, the schools, if you see the schools in the way, you know, this common core crap that's starting. Um, yeah. And then when you're talking about colleges, the liberal colleges and stuff, that's how they're getting to. They're going through the kids because you can indoctrinate them. You know, so really the key is to be able to homeschool you know, at home. Yeah, well, yeah, like you said, right. It starts at home. You know, I know there's plenty of times my kids, they come home. Well, the science teacher said this. Mm, no, I, I don't agree with that. Right. So. Well, that's the problem is there's not enough of those kind of discussions around with the family anymore. And that's because we don't all eat together anymore. Right. That's true. And we're separate. You to, I, I mean, you have to gather your family around the table. I mean, we yeah. we make food with the kids, or sometimes the kids cook. They they make the food, and we always make a point of having two meals a day because we homeschool the kids. I work from home, so we we always gather around the table twice a day to have a meal, say our prayers, and and talk about stuff, mm -hmm. and 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 teach them why we do certain things, yeah. so why we we eat yeah. that way, and and they understand, think, 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 which is what they don't teach in schools. No, so even if you don't get to do it every day, which is is hard. But I mean, you need to make time to do it at least once a week, twice. Yeah, yeah once, twice, three times a week. Yeah, of course. And talk about it. And that's the problem is, but there's a lot of parents that don't have that time. I mean, we've grown up in a different kind of generation, that me generation where we're important, you know, and every generation seems to get different, you know, and how they, how they react. I don't want to say worse because you know, that would be the pot being the pot calling the kettle black. <laughs> Our generation was pretty needy too, but it gets different and how they react to things gets different and their priorities change. We need to start bringing those priorities back uh, to family center because we're, we're losing, we're losing it. We're losing oh, it. absolutely. Dinner, put your phones down, turn yeah. the television off, you know, have a conversation, yeah. read a book and read a real book. I love, <laughs> my, I love my Kindle, but pick up something made out of paper every now and then. Damn it. And read it. <laughs> yep. True. Well, I want to thank all of you for joining in today on this discussion. It's obviously a, a hot topic. Um, perhaps the next time we get together, we can talk about labeling of the GMOs. Um, yeah. uh, I think that would be an important topic. So there's really endless conversations that we can have on this. I appreciate everyone's insights today and um, you know, Douglas giving his his perspectives on uh, are they really bad for us or not? Uh, my opinion is they are. It interferes with the natural order of of life. And, um, and we were talking about education, uh, educating our children, making it more fun, cooking at home. So um, I appreciate everyone being here today and all of your thoughts and We'll have the replay posted on my website, which is the bikinichef.com. And um, I'm not sure if I'll do a, a, I don't know, Chef, maybe we should do another GMO blab next week. <laughs> oh, you could keep doing them every week, I think. You know what I mean? And you just get <laughs> people coming in and because I spread think, the word. Yeah, just, yeah just spread, spread the word. The word. I love it. On food, okay. what are you well, alarmed about? There's so many things we can talk about in food now, you know, so. Yes, there are. So. All right. Well, I appreciate everyone joining. Thank you. We're going to sign off now. Um, you can, everyone, you can briefly share it or follow everybody. I'm Susan Irby. You can find me at SusanIrby.com, TheBikiniChef.com, and Kathy, she's gone now. So we'll see you later. Thank you all for joining.